Before we begin the following program, we would like to say that, in our opinion, it is not suitable for children or those of you who are of a Marxist or misandrist disposition. A fan edit is, as the term suggests, an edit made by a fan. Why? To make a better version than the original. That's why fan editors do what they do. Because no matter how much you love something, or someone, there's always room for improvement. Of course, some things are just so bad that even a fan edit can't make them worth watching. Oh no. Oh, for God's sake! I don't like it. I know you don't. No. 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 But you can't rewrite history. Not one line! People spend all their time making nice things and other people come along and break them. It's the end. You're the cause of this disaster! Fan editing is the answer for the disaster that is post-David Tennant Doctor Who, Disney Star Wars, or any other flawed movie franchise or TV series that isn't as good as it could be. Fan editors do what they do because fans usually love things like Star Wars, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings and Doctor Who more than the television professionals who make them. The problem with normies making content for fans is that normies don't seem to get what it is that the fans are fans of. Regular viewers watch it, enjoy it, and... Well, that's it, really. It's only the fans who give the show free publicity on the internet, not normies. It's fans who spend their money on merchandise, not normies. And yet, the professional normie producers of fan texts don't seem to understand the basic economies of supply and demand. If the normies supply the fans with what they want and expect, the fans will give it free publicity and spend their money on it. If the normies supply the fans with what they don't want, don't like and didn't ask for, then how are they going to make money from that? The way it's meant to work is that the normies make movie and TV fan texts that appeal to fans and normies alike. The fans spend their money on cinema tickets, streaming service subscriptions, DVDs, Blu-rays and other merchandise that help fund the production of more fan texts that appeal to fans and normies. And then it's just rinse and repeat and count the cash. Fail to understand that basic operational principle of fan-based texts, such as movies based on comics, and you won't make enough money to either fund future projects or convince others to invest in them in the hope of a return. Unless, of course, you're the BBC, who are funded by a TV poll tax levied on everyone in the UK who owns a TV set. Or so people think. The truth is, if you don't watch live TV, you don't need to pay the licence fee. The fact that us Brits are compelled to fund the BBC's leftist output has woken people up to the truth that they are helping to fund trash like Chris Chibnob's Dr. Pooh whether they like it or not. So if you don't like it, the answer is very simple. Don't pay the BBC licence fee. Patronising feminist Jodie Shittaker has paid a reported 250 grand to be Dr. Pooh, which works out at 1,587 pensioners' TV licences, one of whom will be your gran. Overpaid, underworked, overhyped, underwhelming and if her average audience of 6.1 million so far is anything to go by, expect that number to go even lower before she's over, she's unpopular with everyone except her fellow lefty misandrists. So, if you don't like funding the BBC's cultural and political bias against you, spend that £157.50 a year on something else, like Netflix or Amazon Prime or maybe even Disney+. Plus. When it comes to Doctor Who, the show has always produced its share of clunkers along with the classics. But if you love it, you'll want to find a way to make each and every episode as watchable as possible, to try and improve things where you can and get rid of all the stuff you don't like, such as Adric or Clara Bloody Oswald. Creatives, normie creatives, 
are usually against fan edits because they are fundamentally insecure and don't like the idea of people preferring someone else's version of what they created. But if what they created sucks, or if what they created is deeply flawed, and a way can be found to fix it and make it better, by which I mean more watchable instead of something to be endured, surely that's a good thing. Fan editing Doctor Who started, for me, with the question of what would the three Doctors have been like if William Hartnell had been well enough to make it into the studio and been there, in the TARDIS, alongside Troughton and Pertwee? And, similarly, what would the five Doctors have been like if Tom Baker's narcissistic egomania hadn't stopped him from taking part? For the former, the answer was the telecomic version I put together on the Who Pick site, and later I did one for the five Doctors too, links to both are in the description. But to get a video version of what the Five Doctors might have been like if Tom Baker was in it, the only answer to that was to do a fan edit. The fan edit of the Five Doctors uses the actual show itself, combined with footage from, mostly, State of Decay, making it, technically, a mashup. The reason for using State of Decay was twofold. One, if Tom had taken part, then John Nathan Turner would have insisted on him wearing his Burgundy Season 18 outfit, not his Graham Williams one. And two, State of Decay is the only Tom story to mention and feature a tower. The storytelling conceit of the fan edit is that Tom is in the Death Zone, but doesn't quite make it to the Dark Tower, getting stuck at the Vampire Tower instead. The illusion is sold by a single composited shot showing both towers in the same location. Having put together a version of the story I was happy with, I wondered if there were any others that could also benefit from some additional editing. The answer was, every single one of them. To date, I have completed 371 fan edits, which includes all 281 adventures from William Hartnell's Unearthly Child to Capaldi's Twice Upon a Time. The rest of that 371 fan edits total comes from things connected to Doctor Who, Doctor Who stories that have, for various reasons, been edited more than once, and non-Doctor Who edits, such as the six movie-length fan edits of Dark Shadows before the arrival of Barnabas Collins. The fan edits had, and still have, their own site, whoflix.wordpress.com. Each post was accompanied by a set of production notes, where I explained what I had cut and why. I felt it was important to give people an insight into the process, instead of a simple shot list like you get on fanedit.org. And that's what got me into trouble with the lefties. After David Tennant had gone, I began to notice more and more things I didn't like creeping into the episodes. So I explained what they were, why I objected to them, and why I cut them out. They were almost always misandry from Clara Bloody Oswald or River Bloody Song and the lefty sheep who think that vagina automatically means good and penis automatically means bad didn't like that. Which is tough. I stopped fan editing Doctor Who when Jodie Shittaker took over from Capaldi as what was the point of fan editing something I didn't want to watch? And so instead I edited other things. And the only Doctor Who I've edited since has been, for the most part, the cartoon versions, such as Power of the Daleks and Fury from the Deep, which I'm working on at the moment. With 371 fan edits to my name, more than anyone else that I know of, that makes me not only the planet's most experienced fan editor, but Doctor Who fan editor in chief. And as of this video, I'm the only one to have fan edited everything from Hartnell to Capaldi, and nobody has done more fan edits in total than me. I'm quietly proud of that. I'm also quietly proud that I've inspired others to follow in my footsteps, which was always part of the reason for doing it. If I include something you think should have been left out, or if I've left out something you think should have been kept in, then there's nothing to stop you doing your own version. So, what sorts of things can you do in a fan edit? Well, there are plenty of options when it comes to improving on what the BBC have given us. For a start, you can edit twice upon a time with a cut to black before Shitika turns up. You can cut out all those story loops of captured escape, captured escape, where the characters end up back where they started in order to fill out the episode count. So in Unearthly Child, for instance... Look at that. Look at that. They're all the same. 
They've been split open. It's burning! It's burning! They get captured, and we fade up on them planning to escape. And we've lost nothing of any real importance, except William Hartnell possibly trying to kill a caveman, which we definitely don't need. We also don't need shit like this. What's that face? Are you thinking? Stop it, you're a man, it looks weird. <laughs> If you're a lefty and have been affected by any of the issues raised in this program... FUCK OFF!